Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned until the end for a special offer. Hello dear friends and thank you for watching today's charcoal drawing time lapse which was filmed at school over the course of nine days where we worked from a live model for about two and a half hours per day. One of my main goals in school is to improve my anatomy skills and working from a live model can definitely help expedite that process. But I know not everyone has access to a live art model, so I thought I would compile a list of tips to improve your anatomy skills without needing a live human being in front of you. These are just tips that you can use while practicing at home. Um, once again, my usual disclaimer, these are based on my personal experience, especially my experience these past six months studying anatomy. Um, so as always, please just feel free to take this list as a light suggestion rather than a strict rule book. Um, even my own methods are constantly evolving, so I don't want to make it sound like my way is the only way to do things or you must follow all my tips or instructions to the T. Um, I always want to encourage every artist to be open to trying different techniques and figure out what works best for you. Anyway, without further ado, here are my five tips to improve anatomy for artists. The first tip is to prioritize measuring the proportions accurately before you worry about rendering the small details perfectly. I would recommend taking some time to do uh, a few quick studies, so don't don't waste too much time trying to render everything to be perfectly blended and detailed and smooth. Instead, just make some simplified, almost line art, where all you're focusing on is measuring the body proportions. Because no matter how perfectly you render something, if it's not proportionate, it'll immediately look off balance or just weird. As human beings, we are very capable of just having like a gut instinct of detecting when something is off, especially on a human body, because we're so used to seeing humans every day. Yeah, so I realized it doesn't really matter how good your rendering skills are. Um, training your eye to be able to accurately uh, see and also depict the correct proportions is another skill that deserves its own dedicated practice and dedicated attention. My second tip is to Try to avoid starting your full body drawings with the head first, and instead try to start with the torso first. And I know it's very tempting and it's a common practice for beginners or even experienced artists, and uh, myself included, I entered school always drawing the human body with the head first. And um, my teachers told us to actually uh, change that habit and instead start with the torso because in real life, our bodies are not rooted in the head. The head instead is just one of the many different parts of the body that is rooted in the torso. So if you think about the torso almost as like the nucleus or the center of a flower and the limbs, the head, the hips, they're all kind of stemming out of that center. So whenever you're just planning the initial blueprint or measuring things out, especially in the early stages, um, I would say start with defining the torso first and then everything else will kind of fall into place more elegantly. Tip number three is to study what's going on beneath the skin. And this is something even having a live art model cannot help with because obviously human beings have skin and we cannot ask for someone to remove their skin. Um, but this requires some uh, research on your own time. And there are tons of resources out there. There are anatomy textbooks. There are um, just simple Google searches. There's medical uh, diagrams and, and pictures. Um, really study what the human body, the skeleton, looks like. And also, after the skeleton, study what the muscles look like. In school, they have us practicing from just drawing very basic line art style illustrations of where all the major muscle groups are and also the major skeletal landmarks. And these help a lot when it comes to rendering um, you know, a live person with skin, <laughs> because when you understand what's going on underneath the skin, a lot of things start to make more sense. 
And instead of having to just blindly copy what you see, you now can have a deeper understanding of why certain things look a certain way. And it just helps as an artist to have that knowledge under your belt because um, a lot of times when we're doing imaginative or fantasy concepts and we don't always have the perfect reference photo or we have to do some guesswork on our own, having a deeper understanding of anatomy as a whole from the bones to the muscles to the skin um, can help us kind of make more educated guesses and fill in those blanks and just make our fantasy concepts look more believable. My fourth tip is to challenge yourself by practicing different angles, poses, and vantage points. Even those outside of your comfort zone and even if the pose is not something you would typically incorporate into your personal work. Uh, this video right now is a great example. I typically don't work in this kind of extreme profile. Um, I very much prefer a three quarters view and um, studying like espe especially the human head from a profile actually gave me a better understanding of the shape of the skull and how the neck and the head can hinge together or like how they're connected or how the neck is connected to the shoulders. Um, these are things that from my usual comfort zone three quarters view, I don't really get to notice or learn. So even if you don't typically paint a portrait of someone, let's say like from the back where you're just seeing the back of the head and the back of the neck and the back of the torso, um, still try to practice some studies or just even a few quick kind of line art sessions, like I mentioned before, like it doesn't have to be perfect or epic. It can be a quick doodle. But when you practice your anatomy, um, give yourself the opportunity to step outside your comfort zone and see the figure from all angles. And only then can you have a more well-rounded understanding of how the human body works and how the different body parts are connected and how they interact with each other. And my fifth and final tip is to Every now and then, try to draw an anatomically correct human body purely from memory, meaning don't use any reference photos. And again, this can be a quick doodle, but it's a great way to immediately figure out which areas you're already familiar or comfortable with and which areas you still need to work on. That way, the next time you practice, you can focus more on the problem areas to extract the uh, maximum effectiveness from your practice sessions. I think we all obviously enjoy drawing and painting the things that are easy for us or that we're already pretty good at because it's satisfying to make something look good. Um, but I think when it comes to practicing and just building up your fundamental skills, it's important to kind of go the opposite direction. Focus more energy on the things that are challenging, that are difficult, that you don't understand yet, that that don't feel super fun or satisfying uh, to draw because, you know, they present a huge amount of hurdles. Um, only that way can we improve. So uh, sometimes when you're doing studies or when you're not working on pieces that are going to clients and you don't mind, you know, making things that don't look perfect, um, I would say those are the opportunities where you can really maximize uh, your learning potential by focusing more on the areas that you have trouble with. And trying to draw a human body purely from memory is a great way to quickly pinpoint those trouble areas. And those are all my tips. Thank you all so much for watching this far and I hope I was able to be helpful in some way. I hope I made sense. Um, if you would like to see a longer 30 minute version of this tutorial where I go more in depth into the tips and the materials along with hundreds of hours of exclusive content, feel free to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash happy artist. And as always, the sale that never ends is still going on in my shop. So if you want 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes. All available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. 
I wanted to quickly thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and the art community. I've actually enjoyed using Squarespace for four years now to build and host my online shop and website. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist for 10% off your first purchase. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.